Welcome back bakers. In today's video we are making some incredible mall teaser cupcakes. You can just hear how excited I am about these because you are going to love them. If you like the video smash that thumbs up button and also hit subscribe so that you don't miss any more of my future uploads. This recipe makes quite a large batch of between 16 and 18 cupcakes depending on the size of your cupcake cases so go ahead and adjust as necessary. So you will need 240 grams of all-purpose flour and in there I have a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of salt, 200 grams of caster sugar, a packet of Horlicks hot chocolate mix. This is where the malty flavor will come from. 170 grams of unsalted butter. We're going to use one whole egg and two egg whites. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. And for our wet ingredients, we have 120 grams of sour cream and 120 mils of whole milk. And for the star of the show, I have about 120 grams of Maltesers. As always, our first port of call is to sift through all of our dry ingredients into a clean mixing bowl. This makes sure we have no lumps and bumps throughout our mixture and nobody is getting a mouthful of crystallized sugar. Give everything a really good mix together and then we're on to our wet ingredients. Whisk together your sour cream, your whole milk, your vanilla extract before going ahead and separating your eggs. So as I mentioned, we're using one whole egg for this recipe. We do want the fat content from the yolk and two egg whites. I find the easiest way to do this is to separate the yolk from the white using my fingers and just allowing the white to fall through my fingers and into a bowl. You don't have to be as precise with this as you would be if you're making something like a meringue, which is why I can get away with that broken yolk here. Whisk up your eggs, add to your other wet ingredients and mix to combine. For this particular recipe, I'm using the reverse creaming method, which you would typically use to make cake. It gives a really light, cakey feel to the cupcake, which I absolutely love. And it involves firstly, fluffing up your butter using a hand mixer. We then want to combine the butter with our dry ingredients. Essentially what this method does is coat all of your flour particles in butter, minimizing the activation of the protein gluten, which could lead to a tough and rather dense cupcake. It could take a couple of minutes for the mixture to fully incorporate. You will see that crumbly sand-like mixture start to develop. And once there are no large clumps left in the mixture, you can go ahead and start to slowly incorporate your wet ingredients. Next, we're going to bash up about three quarters of our Maltesers because we want to fold these through the mixture. So depending on the size of the Malteser chunk that you like in your cupcake, you can either bash to a fine powder, a medium powder, or leave it really chunky. Fold the Maltesers through, and then it is time to fill our cupcake liners. If you want to be really precise about it and get the most even cupcakes you possibly can, you can weigh out the amount of batter that you're putting in each cupcake case, which for me is usually three quarters full at about 65 grams. Before baking in the oven, I like to take a knife and just run it around the cupcake case just to make sure that there are no air pockets. And finally, tap the cupcake tray on the table a couple of times, again, just to make sure we have no pockets of air that are stuck throughout the mixture. And these will go into a preheated fan oven at 160 degrees for 20 minutes. Keep an eye on these around minute 17, just to check that they're not over browning in your particular oven. Once your cupcakes are fully baked and you're happy, remove them from the oven, remove them from the tray and allow them to cool completely on a wire rack. Feel free to leave it there, but if you do want to go ahead and complete the cupcake with a lovely Malteser buttercream, then keep on watching. So for your buttercream, you will need 450 grams of icing sugar, 350 grams of butter, one packet of Horlicks, and one to two tablespoons of whole milk to loosen up the mixture if needs be. This is a fairly standard buttercream recipe, so we're going to go ahead and beat the butter until it's really nice, pale, and fluffy. So this produces a really lovely, smooth, light buttercream. However, just be aware that if you're using a hand mixer like I am today, you will end up whipping in quite a lot of air, and you will see those little air bubbles on the surface of your mixture. It doesn't affect the flavor whatsoever, but you may want to have a more smooth buttercream. To do that, you can literally smooth out the air bubbles using a spatula like I'm doing here, or switch to a stand mixer paddle attachment. Next, we want to prepare our piping bag. I place the nozzle that I want to use right at the end of the piping bag to get an idea of where I need to make the cut. 
I want to decorate my cupcakes in kind of a rose swirl pattern, so I'm going to use this particular star tip here. This one actually isn't branded, but I will link a similar nozzle in the description box below. To fill our piping bag, I'm going to grab a glass, fold the piping bag over the glass. This really is an age old baker's tip for filling piping bags and pack the buttercream down into the bag. Push out any air and twist the piping bag around, applying some pressure until your buttercream starts to come out the end of your piping nozzle. And if you want to do some practice swirls, go ahead and do that into your mixing bowl. So to make that lovely rose swirl shape, I'm going to start in the center of the cupcake and work my way around in a really steady, consistent motion, going at the same speed all around the cupcake, pulling the bag away quickly at the end. And voila, you have a gorgeous rose cupcake. I think these look so stunning and so delicious. And I'm going to finish them off with just some little Maltesers on the top so that we know that they are a Malteser cupcake. If I cut through one of the cupcakes here and show you the interior crumb, you can see exactly what I meant by how cakey and light this cupcake is. Within my opinion, just the right balance of buttercream to cupcake so that it's not overpowering. You get that really lovely malty flavor of the Maltesers and the Horlicks coming through. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it straightforward and easy. And if you do try these cupcakes, please do tag me in all of your recreations. I would absolutely love to see them. If you like the recipe and you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also don't forget to hit subscribe. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you back in my next video. Bye.